Hello and welcome to In the Art Scene podcast, a place where creatives share their stories. My name is Galina Marquez and I have another cool story prepared for you today, so let's get to it. Hello everybody and welcome to In the Art Scene podcast and today we're having a guest from afar, uh, Christy David from Rotterdam, Netherlands. Awesome. We just exchanged a couple of words about how the winter is going in Rotterdam, in Netherlands. Uh, but I'll let uh, Christy introduce herself and, and talk about where she lives and what she does. And we'll, we'll go from there. Hi, Christy. Hi, Galena. Thank you for having me, um, for your time in the early, early morning, which is my time uh, in the late afternoon here in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Now, most people, when they hear the words the Netherlands, they will immediately think Amsterdam. Um, that is not where I'm based. Amsterdam is the capital, and we are in Rotterdam, the second largest city of the country, and also known as um, one of the biggest ports in the world. Port of Rotterdam is quite famous, um, but it's also getting more and more famous for a very lively, creative arts uh, creative scene and uh, yeah I am one of the many artists working and, and living in Rotterdam and um, but expanding um, more and more international um, yeah that's you it are, and I yeah um, I, I make art obviously I you, talk a lot about my art so. <laughs> <laughs> you're quite well known uh, I would I would assume across the globe um um, you're known as Ms. Witty on Instagram and Ms. Yes. with the double Z. Yeah. And you're you're making some amazing art. When I when I first looked at it, I was like, I I like I don't I don't even have words for that, but it's something. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you uh, they are so uh, so the creatures that you are creating, they are on one hand like very very kind of naive and childlike and uh, um, kind of kind in the way, but they are at the same time look like little monsters. They don't look like, uh, you know, the cool kind of cartoonish uh, illustrations for children's books. They're more about, I don't know, I would, I would see it in my dream probably would get scared. But when I look at your paintings, they're for whatever reason I'm so much drawn into them. They're uh, I don't know. They're like little little pieces of, of of our souls that are kind of you know jumping out uh, on 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 your pages and are talking to us. I, I, like I, this is this is how I can describe it. I have no other words for that. <laughs> I think it's quite 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 what it is actually. Oh, it's very beautifully described. Thank you. I might I might just borrow that. Um, Please credit yeah. me on that. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, uh, um, I refer um, to my work myself um, as, and it's actually a term that I've come to coin and embrace um, over the last two two years um, as modern fables. And that's one of the best descriptions I can actually think of because I'm fascinated by. Uh, children's stories. I'm fascinated by fables. The darker, the better. Um, this actually, before uh, I uh, uh, clicked on the Zoom link, I was listening to another, uh, watching a documentary about uh, old Celtic um, myths and, 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 and old stories. And one of the things that they also touched upon was the old, the old uh, fairy tale, the old versions, fairy tales of the fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm, and then not the toned down, sugar coated versions as we've come to know them. Uh, I'm so I'm sorry. I have to interrupt you. Brothers Grimm are sugar coated. Like to me, it sounds like I, I was since the childhood. I was so scared of Brothers Grimm stories, <laughs> and you're calling them sugar coated. <laughs> well, I should actually say perhaps the more Disneyfied versions. That's okay. the more sugar coated, okay. but. In, in truth, actually, the Brothers Grimm rewrote and uh, constantly changed the, the, the stories that they they did this massive research on the old folk tales from their, 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 their surroundings. Uh, Germany at the time, which wasn't no Germany as we know now then, but 
um, this big region in the in, in northern Europe. And they started out this research to preserve the old folk tales from their uh, from their days and and way before, of course, because it's oral history. You know, it's been uh, uh, given passed through many generations. So, and they actually what they did is is also to adjust and rewrite and to interpret the stories. Um, so their version as gruesome as it is to us, was actually the toned down version of the very dark and very uh, almost sinister um, versions of these, these very ancient um, stories. These were rooted in, 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 in the history and myths and medieval mysteries uh, um, of, of those, those days. And one thing that I found very interesting about this documentaries was that, that they uh, concluded that that was a way for normal folk, you know, it was harsh times, um, life wasn't easy, um, to get a grip on, on life and on all the things that didn't, they, they could not explain, you know, the, the, the plague, uh, illnesses, diseases, um, you know, all these gruesome um, um, life events, um, were, were just, you know, being explained away in these, these, these myths and folk stories. So, um, well, that's, that's lovely conversational material. <laughs> early in this conversation, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's actually, it's actually very, very interesting. I did not know that. I know that they were um, uh, using uh, old folk fairy oh. tales kind of as their inspiration when they were writing, but I never went into as deep research as you do. And it's it it actually makes a lot of sense that those stories were in the way of kind of you know uh, explaining unexplainable to people who were living in a very harsh conditions and uh, and also it kind of makes sense that you know those those stories were not about you know living. <laughs> uh, um, happily ever after because I assume none of them. <laughs> none of them had, <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's like you know the, the whole happily ever after was of course added later, and of there course. is the the, the 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 princesses and everything and blah blah. And then of course, um, for uh, uh, our time, the, the Disney versions are you know in, in a way have become the iconic standard for 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 fairy tales kind of thing. Yeah. Um, as for me, I'm much more interested in the in the not necessarily darker, but the, the more realistic um, um, version of uh, uh, this, this fairy tale thing to me is an allegory of the times that people lived in. And um, you have these beautiful, beautiful fables throughout, uh, you know, history, throughout literature and, and writers and poets and Artists have done many, many, many beautiful things um, using fables and, and fairy tales as an inspiration, as a source of inspiration, myths and legends. And um, I'm, I guess I'm one of them, um, but I do really feel that it's an allegory of um, aspects of society that we live in, definitely. Do you have a favorite one? A favorite? A, 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 um, like a... A fable. Um, I have to think. Um, but I don't know what the English um, um, title is. It's, it's actually the in, in in Dutch we'd say the the Vos Reinaarde. It's uh, about this this fox. It's, 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 it's a fox, and he goes through all kinds of adventures, which are like moral. There's a morality to it, and, and yet there's not. And I think um, I will have to look up. I, I will. I will have to look that one up for the blog post. <laughs> that, yeah, I'll appreciate that. Yeah, because that's what I'm thinking. Okay, but what is it called in English? Okay, well, I have to look that one up. Um, but I, I like the fact um, that there is play on morality in there, and um, as again, the more mainstreamed these stories are, the the the, the more catered towards the mainstream, uh, the, the moral becomes, you know, as um, uh, it's it, it, family morals and that, all that kind of thing. Um, but in, 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 in the more, you know, uh, I wouldn't say, how do you say it? The first versions of these, 
these fairy tales, there are more, the morality is much more um, gray. There's a, a gray area of, uh, you know, what, what is the norm and what is moral? And, you know, it's, it's actually, and if you look at it, the times that we live in, um, I, that's what I find interesting, you know, what is wrong and what is right. And it, you know, it's just changes every time. And, you know, some things are considered to be right and some things are considered to be wrong, but this is a huge gray area. And, and that is where I like to, like to root into, like I love just rooting into that gray area of, uh, of the complexity of, uh, of human psyche, actually, you know? So I like to root in brain pickings. Yeah, I no, I, I totally see how you would appreciate that, uh, you know, the massive gray area, because, yes, uh, in a way, uh, a lot of the things in the modern society are sugarcoated. And uh, I, like, I cannot say if it's, you know, good or bad. It's it's probably good when we're moving towards some human values and, you know, uh, uh respecting human rights, uh, you know, fighting diseases, uh, oh, looking, after, looking after each other, uh, taking care of the planet, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, when you are going back hundreds and hundreds of years and you're reading the stories where morality is kind of, you know, for us, it's questionable because someone is making choices, not necessarily how I we like how we would see it today, you know, being you know, a good choice, right? You have to remember about the the times the, those people were living and the circumstances they were having and the, uh, the amount of knowledge they had about themselves and about the world. So yeah, it is it is really it is really interesting. And in a way, humanity like the knowledge base of humanity has changed a lot, but the basic humanity, just yeah. like you said, human human yeah. psyche is pretty much on the same level <laughs> definitely definitely you know it's that i am i'm a i'm, I'm a great uh, believer in, in in science and i'm a but i'm a great believer in in i wouldn't say uh magic in terms of um wizardry and kind of stuff but you know there is um there's always been this tradition of alchemy in 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 in, in um kind of like next to um next to science and um, somewhere in, in my art those two worlds collide they meet and they collide and they meet it's like um, I've, I've built this universe I wouldn't say an alternate universe but like this 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 allegory of um, well it's about humans basically you know people when you, when you look at my work um, it's like people see these creatures and these characters and these fable-like, um, uh, yeah, characters. And, uh, but but it's actually about people. It's about people like you and you and I and and, and, and other people. You know, people I know or, or people uh, I see on the news. It, it's about people. I just don't draw people. Um, somebody actually said to me once. Well, it's probably just as good. Um, that you do not draw actual people because it would be too much in your face, what you're trying to say. And here you have this safe, um, I wouldn't say distance, but this kind of like, you know, people go and they look at my work and they see these creatures and think, oh, well, that's, that's nice, that's lovely. And it's, oh, no, this is not so lovely after all. Or this is, hey, there is something sinister happening here, but there is still... Um, um, a lot of um, oh, well, they're still having fun, you know. They're still having fun, and they're still kind of surviving, and and that's when they start uh, relating to it and, and say, well, it's just about people. It's just I do not draw people, not that I cannot draw people. I just prefer not to. You know, it, it makes a lot of sense to me because uh, the way you're describing uh, your creatures. It is really, yeah, they are very human like although they don't look nearly as like they more look like animals with with yeah. human limbs. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, 
everyone who's listening, you will have to go and check out the blog post and and Christie's Instagram to know what we're talking about because it is just <laughs> impossible. Like <laughs> my English is not capable of describing it, but you are absolutely. Uh, right. I, I love that uh, explanation of your uh, work, of your creatures, that if you were putting human faces in them, uh, it's almost like humans, like we are reading uh, each other's faces in, in a certain way. And we're even reading our own faces when we're looking like, you know, at the screen recording or the mirror or something like that. And that's a total different level of judgment. But when you're looking at those creatures, it's more like you are looking at yourself with the inner eye, yeah. not not with your eyes on your face, but like the eyes that are within, and and that's the and that's the different level of understanding of of humans. So it's it's very interesting. Uh, have you ever drawn anything else, or were you ever doing something fable like? What, what, what was your art like, I don't know, in the past? Oh, when I started, um, good question. I think I've always um, drawn this type of, I was, as you know, I've, 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 I've learned to paint and I've learned to, you know, you start at the, uh, the academy and you, you do still lives and you, you paint you know models um so that's where i uh, absolutely uh, learned a lot and, and i can do that i just found very early on in life it um it it did not interest it me it did not interest me uh, that much to paint people and also um looking at um the, the, the whole art tradition and and everything i just felt i did not have the, too much to offer there uh, to to add I didn't have a lot to say by drawing or painting people. I, I felt naturally drawn to, to fable-like characters. And, and also because well, I, I was influenced a lot, but I read a lot as a child, uh, of course, uh, the, the fables and fairy tales, myths and legends, um, monsters. Um, and I was fascinated by the concept of monsters. Uh, the whole idea of that um, there is something that you consider a monster is where it's just the other, you know? And that that really got stuck in my, I think in my, my brain, in my whole DNA or something like that. It was something that um, the, the fact that as a society, we've always uh, somehow managed to ostracize people for being different. And, um, you know, literally name them monsters and you know throughout history you have countless and countless and countless examples of that and um, that really as a child made a huge imprint on me it made a huge impression that we as 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 human beings can do that to other human beings as well as you know it's just the other person it's a person you know so um, that that is very ingrained, I think in 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 my work and that's why I think I'm naturally drawn to to creating um, monsters or, or creatures or whatever people like to call them. I mean, that's that's also up to them. Um, I refer to them sometimes as my little monsters, and then I refer to them as my babies, and sometimes I refer to them as just um, creatures or but they are bird people. Um, I've been drawing, I've been massively, massively influenced by birds. Um, Actually, for the longest time, and then sometimes, you know, it, it, it must be in your work, you know, sometimes there's this inspiration and there's a wave of inspiration and then it goes a bit back to, you know, to the background and then fades and then it comes back. So all of a sudden birds started appearing, appearing in my work, kind of like influences. And um, I think that's a good example because they're so expressive. Um, there's so much you can do with them and in, 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 in character building uh, but also uh, with the texture of, of, of the anatomy, um, the feathers, you know, there's so much you can do with them. The colors, I mean, there are so many species of birds. You just, um, and here too, I am not particularly interested in recreating the bird as it is, but to really to transform it to a bird person, 
to yeah bird people kind of like these creatures that are half man half bird um to as as sort of like messengers to get across what i'm trying to trying to to say or to depict or you know whatever it's just my uh yeah so but yeah as in terms of so yeah i've been always naturally drawn to um drawing that type of um other other figures um to um yeah so and with this particular universe with this particular uh type of creatures for how long have you been doing this the you mean the birds or the um the, the whole um this um uh, this this whole universe, I think, started to come about. Well, it's always been there, but I've been always been trying to. Um, I have a bit of a um, uh, extraordinary art career, but then I think a lot of artists have. I, I, I just a little sidestep. I, I uh, saw another, uh, listened to another podcast, po uh, one of your podcasts, and I completely forgot her name. It's very, but it's somebody who went from corporate. To being an artist from the Jenny Jackal, world. yeah, uh -huh. I loved that one because I could relate to it big time because I started out as an artist, a young and aspiring and talented artist, at you know 19, 20 years old, and you're you know you're going to conquer the world, and uh, this is an, an massively influenced by these great German dramatic painters, you know, I had these vivid dreams of creating big works, and then of course. Um, it's, it turns out that the art world is a harsh world. I, I, I found it is a very harsh world and I was not equipped by it, for it. I was not made for it, uh, not at that age. So I went to do um, completely a, a turn and I ended up, a long story short, but I ended up in the corporate world as well. And then after a while, um, I learned a lot there. I learned a lot. Without that U-turn, I don't think I could have done what I do now the way I do it and I could not have matured uh, in the same way because I tell you if there's any world, uh, you know dog eat dog rat race and everything well that's the corporate world it's I know. massive <laughs> it's just this massive <laughs> breeding ground for a lot of the uh, uh, things of my work I well but, I, I you, you got it. A lot. A lot of your creatures actually remind me of my former co-workers <laughs> from the corporate world. <laughs> it's such a. It's it's like a pressure cooker, you know. That yeah, world is pressure is. cooker. You have to constantly perform and uh, meet your targets, meet your deadlines, and actually, um, but I have to drag that up. Um, what, I actually, yeah. What did you do in the corporate world? What, what kind of work did you do? Uh, I, I did, um, I was a manager in, in sponsorships and, um, fundraising. I, I, Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. Very tough one. Um, for several, uh, NGOs and, um, for uh, cultural projects, creative projects. I still do some of those, um, but in a different, um, way. I, I basically, I ditched the whole manager thing. <laughs> I'm not cut out to be a manager. It's like, uh, I'm not that kind of person. I like to uh, work together with people and do and get beautiful things going on basis of co-creation. That's much more uh, me. And it's actually when I, uh, because I took a long break from, from creating art between, I think, um, 2000, nay, between 1998, something like that, and uh, 2008. And um, when I started drawing again, I, I really, uh, I created this big morphed uh, uh, rabbit, actually, uh, um, in, in, in stuck into corporate modus, you know, fighting all these technological um, things, fighting deadlines, uh, fighting targets, literally fighting them, being strangled by graphics, you know. <laughs> And, 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 and kind of thing. So um, it started very, it, it very cartoon like. Um, that's because as a child, I, I watched a lot of cartoons. Um, but again, it 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 took 
you know, my own interpretation of that, because, you know, mostly, as you say, uh, the most cartoon figures have these lovely little, you know, round eyes mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. these lovely are, are they're cuddly. And I thought, you know, life is not cuddly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and most people are not, you know. So um, I'm, 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 I'm creating not cuddly creatures. And I just, I don't know if it, it, it somehow um, people liked it. People liked it. And I just, you know, further. And, and then I thought, okay. Um, this is uh, this is really speaking to me um, to have this. I I have this suppressed universe in in my head, um, and is waiting to come out. And that's uh, well, that was two thousand eight, and I've basically <laughs> never stopped creating, working to depict that universe ever, ever since. Um, but it, it was it was a a a um, a journey from you know I I've. Created. Remind me that I actually will send you one of those rabbits because then you know what I'm talking about. It's very, I will. Yeah. Very, yeah. This very cartoon-like rabbits that um, I thought, you know, I need to develop them. I need to. De- I need to develop this world a bit further for it to have depth. There's more to it than. And I was just touching the surface, and um, um, so I've always been looking for ways to. Um, to go deeper, to peel away all these layers of, um, uh, because these early earliest works are, um, you can you can feel something like scratching the surface, but mm-hmm. they're still very it's surface. And um, where I think you know, a couple of years later now, and I think I've 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 only just beginning to <laughs> peel away the layers. So. That, that's a long journey. That's a real long journey. Let's take a short coffee break. Are you enjoying this episode? If you do, would you buy me a coffee? I would really appreciate it. The link is in the show notes and on our website, in theartscene.com. Thank you for your support. I have to ask you, you you said that you started around 2008 and that was like a global recession time. Uh Did that uh, influence you somehow? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, um, uh, I actually uh, bought my first house by myself in 2008 after a uh, really like a divorce from hell. and I was actually um, also at the top of my game with 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 work. I I was doing some really great projects and they paid well. And I was like, you know, okay. And and art still at the time was a bit in the background, and I did a bit of drawing, but it was I considered it by that time a hobby. Um, and then you know it that was in February two thousand eight, and I know still I I, I can still see myself still watching. It was I think in September two thousand and eight when yeah August uh, or September something like that yeah when Lehman Brothers fell, and I knew enough from financial markets to know okay this is not good, this is not good. This is going to affect everything in the world, and it's going to affect the house. Will be, this will be a housing crisis. And here I was, I just was, you know, in my newly purchased home for about half a year. And then I made a classic mistake. I just went to do more work, more work, you know, more well-paid work because I needed, I needed money on the bank and then I could keep my house, blah, blah, blah. And something didn't sit with me in my in my in my head. It didn't feel right. And I at the same time I I felt this really urge to draw. So you know I was just taking on all these projects and I was just working long hours, um, getting paid, but money was going out as quickly you know as it came in. And um, it it you could feel you could feel that your 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 jobs were getting less. And the pressure to create was getting, you know, it was like a pressure cooker in my head. The pressure to create was getting immense, but I also needed to work, you know. Um, so something's got to give. Um, and that moment came a couple of years later when, of course, um, there was this massive recession. And uh, by then I was all out of, mostly out of paid work because I was, you know, um, independent contractor 
freelancer, so you're the first to go. And um, I basically lost my house. That was in 2015. So I think I, I hold on to that for a long time. I managed to push it away for a long time, but eventually I lost it. And so sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it was a traumatizing experience in a way. Um, not the actual loss of the thing, because in the end it's bricks, you know. But it was the loss of my home. It was the loss of my studio because I had a studio at home, and it was just going through the motions with all kinds of. Um, um, you know, uh, the, the mortgager and the banks and blah, blah, blah. These people who do not, re- who could not relate to your situation and were just, you know, const- com- you know, completely, again, reinforcing in the back of, in my mind, of course, okay, this is what my work is about. This is literally what my work is about. And then at the same time, I am still a very privileged person. You know, I, I, I have um, a good support network. I, I, I had a good I still have a good support network. I had many friends. I still have many friends um, um, helping me. Um, I, 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 I I actually landed on my feet without going to into too much detail, but um, I, I landed back on my feet quite quickly. but yeah, it had a massive impact on, on, on how you view things. And again, it reinforced in, in me, in the back of my mind, okay, so this is this is this is our world, you know. It's it's so easy to go from, from up there <laughs> to here. Um, and 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 um, so that was, I think it was, yeah, it was very um, crucial in, in, in the development for for my art, you know, it, it was a difficult time because, you know, you don't have a studio and you have to, uh, I was happy to found, also find somebody uh, who, who was willing to, to, to share a life with me. So, you know, in, 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 in the gutter and, and on the bottom of it all, you find love and then you are um, um, working at the kitchen table because I know one thing and I think every artist can relate to that. You know, the first shock that you get when you lose your studio and all your stuff is in storage and you think, I'm never going to create again. Well, of course you do. You get a sketchbook. You get a, um, a you know, a pen. It, can, you know, it doesn't have you know, the cheapest pen or a pencil, whatever. You keep on creating. And that that to me was... It, it was a very, it was a profound experience and um, I'm still, you know, having, I'm still feeling the effects in a way. Um, but then, yeah, you know, who could, who could have predicted that a couple of years later, we would have to go through a pandemic. <laughs> so um, um, it, 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 it was a, 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 uh, um, yeah, a profound experience, and but it really shaped me even more, and really made me realize that okay, you know, whatever is going to happen to me, whatever curveballs life might throw at me, still, um, I will keep on creating, and I think that that is um, something that I think many artists can relate to because we 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 don't we 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 haven't chosen the most easiest career path, you know as an artist and even the most entrepreneurial of artists uh, uh, who are uh, doing quite well and who are doing uh, these many uh, other, uh, you know, projects and kind of things. It's, it's so hard to always keep yourself pushing and to allocate that time for creation for yourself. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah. Sometimes people say to me, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a mad life. And I say, yeah, but yeah, but where would we be without art? You know? Exactly. Exactly. And uh, yeah, pandemic, uh, definitely. Well, I, I, I started, I started uh, this podcast in the middle of pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, Every artist I have spoken to had um, quite a profound experience going through this stuff and, and people in general, uh, at the beginning of like for me personally it was kind of a quiet time 
that would allow me to, you know, just go inward and really process where I am and kind of calm down. And uh, I took some time for personal growth and stuff like that. And then I was seeing people around me, people who were close to me going through massive uh, depressions and, and anxieties. And, and so, yeah, that's a, that's a very uh, life-shaping experience for sure. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and yeah, and you're right. Like if you, if you look back pretty much every 10 years, something drastic happens. <laughs> we, <laughs> we haven't, so I was born in the eighties and since the eighties, I, I think uh, there was no decade that I lived in that was, uh, you yeah. know, relatively calm and with no, uh, like no uh, crises, recessions, pandemics, or something like that. Something <laughs> always happens. <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, I always, you know, every generation has its, has its recession or its crisis or its, its thing, you know, um, or every, as you say, every 10 years, something happens to, to, to shook the world. I mean, for me, when the when this whole thing started this COVID thing and you know at first for at first it's like okay there was something happening far 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 away and I had this opening of an exhibition it was in February and it was a nice quaint uh, solo exhibition in a, a community center uh, in, in the vicinity and it was you know really nice and we had a couple of open you know open studio days planned or open open exhibitions how do you say it and um, yeah, I was really looking forward to it. And I remember the first of these open of you know these open houses, people were just you know talking about yeah, but it it just you know we had our first. That was the day that our first um, COVID case in the Netherlands got confirmed, and people were still like one and half was like okay, but it's you know it's the flu, and the other half was just like oh yeah, and I was just like. I don't know, you know, something just doesn't sit right with me. And then, of course, I think a week later or so, or two weeks later, we went in lockdown and my exhibition got postponed and it got closed. And I was just like, okay, great, great. I have this exhibition and it, I was selling quite well. And it was like, oh, no, you know, great. And at the same time, I thought, okay, um, because I'm a bit of a history nerd, so I had dug into the whole... Spanish flu kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it, 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 that was a period in time that also has, has a lot of my interest. So, um, I, I kind of was like, okay, this is going to, this is not going to go away in like two months. So I was mentally kind of, I, I really set my mind to, okay, this is going to last for, for a while. Um, and um at the same, yeah, I, I, I had um, some projects that were canceled and others that got postponed and others that actually kind of pedaled on. So I was like, okay, I wasn't in too much financial despair. And at the same time, I also had, okay, like, you know, I, I had already been through my own traumatic experience a couple of years before. I wasn't as shaken as many people um as other people were and i i i i know also uh, that so many people just lost their jobs just like that you know from one day and the other when all the theaters closed and everything so that is that is awful that isn't that has been awful and it's still an awful time for a lot of people uh, who work in in that uh, environment i had the um, uh, I, I'm, I'm still privileged to, you know, with the career that I've gotten, I still can, you know, uh, do enough things to generate some kind of income. So that's, that's okay. Um, but it gave me a lot of, as with many artists, I think a lot of time to, to, to think, okay, yeah, you know, what do I want with my work, with my, you know, uh, art, where do I want to go from here? Um, that's the same. I've always wanted to go um, more international. Uh, I always felt that, um, and it's not that, no, it's not that people here do not appreciate my work, but I, I, I feel I have this, this, this reach that could go more, more globally, you know, and, you know, I have, I have ambitions. <laughs> so, um, 
And that's at the same time that there was a couple of uh, people that I knew from uh, Sergio Gomez's uh, Art Next Level Academy um, that said, hey, let's do something. Let's get together. Let's do a, a group. Let's do a, an, an, an exhibition online. Yeah, where online? Oh, just on Facebook. I thought, well, okay, that's cool. You know, just let's just do something. And hence, et voila, the International Online Art Collective was just born like that. And we did um, our first um, uh, Facebook exhibition. I think we started out with 22 people and we are now uh, a group of 15, quite a, a close-knit group of 15. We from, from, from really started off as, as artists who did not know each other. We have really become friends. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things that has come out, out of this whole pandemic thing is that... Um, that we have a group of 15 artists that actually work together on, on, on some interesting projects of which I'm not at liberty to talk about at the moment. Okay. Um, <laughs> something very exciting. Follow us, International Online Art Collective. Okay. Um, oh, but, oh, uh, make, make sure to include all the links because by the time this episode uh, is up, uh, maybe those projects will be already realized. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But <laughs> I we'll see. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm somewhat familiar with that group. I know a couple of people. Yeah, uh, I am uh, actually I made very good friends with Ina mm-hmm. um, and uh, Caroline Carp, yeah. and I did did the uh, yeah. collab, uh, which is at the end of the second season on my show, and it was at the beginning True, of the I second season of her show. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah, so I kind of you know following you guys here and there a little bit. <laughs> No, it's just very, it's very interesting to to have this uh, because everything, of course, everybody went online and everybody downloaded Zoom. And I think there's, I've, I've defined two types of people. There's people who absolutely, absolutely hate it and just, you know, are, are starving for this, this human personal contact. And of course, I miss that. I miss that too. And in a way, we're still here in the throes of, you know, um, I'm still being very careful here. So, um, but I just saw opportunities and I saw, you know, I'm working with all these people that are in, in different countries anyway. And, at, uh, you know, the chances that you are get to travel around the world continuously. I, I don't have the money for continuously traveling, let's alone a private jet or something. So um, I was just absolutely glad that, that this, 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 this uh, possibility of having all these online chats, all these online conversations um, um, was there. So I just embraced it, and I think we all embraced it, and and um, I uh, I absolutely uh, 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 love what it brought me. Yeah, I, ha- I have a very similar experience, and I know that a lot of people feel isolated. And yes, I am also longing for you know in person things and going out and and things like that. But in two years of the pandemic, I think I've made more meaningful connections than I have made in 30 years of my life. It's it's amazing. You just open yourself like when you just open yourself to this opportunity, it's amazing what happens. No, I definitely agree there. And that is, uh, yeah. So I, I, uh, that, that was, uh, in the in, in the beginning of the the whole pandemic thing was something that I thought okay you know and and um, um, let's just do it let's just get to know each other and let's just connect because we're all uh, um, based around around the globe anyway so this is what we normally and this is what we also this this is how we already communicated with each other so nothing changed there it just um, sped up. Um, the, the process, I think, and um, because you could see all these, um, uh, uh, all of a sudden, where all these apps appearing with, you know, virtual exhibitions and kind of thing, things that I think would not have been developed further in such short a time um, had the pandemic not happened. So in, in a way, um, of course, it hit the art world very hard it, it hit a lot of industries very hard um but yeah artists are 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 vulnerable <laughs> um so it hit it hit the art world very hard the whole creative scene but at the same time a lot of things came about that i think we would have not seen happening so 
so fast uh, had this not happened. So it's it's like, um, um, and again, this is also possible when you are in a position to to embrace that. You know, if you are literally struggling for survival, then of course you you cannot say this, you cannot do that. I'm fully aware of that, but I I think we were lucky to uh, embrace what was given to us to to um, to say, okay, we're going to take this opportunity and we're just going to do something with it creatively, artistically, and, uh, and, and, and business-wise as well, you know? Um, and I think I've, I've, as you say, like you, making so many connections internationally, and that is what I wanted for my, for my, for my work, for my art. Um, but instead of, you know, the, pre-pandemic I would have probably still thought okay you know how am I ever going to end up in an international exhibition how am I going to you know I have to write to people I have to uh, call them and you have to oh yeah well okay, there is this thing called zoom blah 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 but then the other person wants to skype you know it's just you know, and all of a sudden boom <laughs> here we are connecting internationally so yeah that to me is uh that, 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 and, and I thought I'm not I'm not going to waste that. I'm not going to let that one go. Yeah. And I I think that art world, uh, yeah, everyone struggled at the beginning of the pandemic uh, and everyone adapted uh, like at some point. And I, and I, I'm, I'm talking to people uh, on this podcast and it's just amazing to me how, how resilient the creative world is how the Absolutely. artists have adapted to this thing. Uh, there's there's one episode on the second season, which you actually are going to hear tomorrow. And for, for our listeners, it, it's the uh, episode number six on the second season with uh, a photographer and a model who are talking about remote photography. Mm. So they figured out how to make fine art uh, modeling like a studio photography being in a totally different places wow. and and it opened up the doors for the photographers for example to work with models all over the world like the photographer in Georgia in the United States would work with someone in London or Paris or like pretty much anywhere yeah. it's just yeah. a matter of equipment and and a good internet connection yeah that's it and also what I liked about it is that you have this spirit of um, sharing information, you know, that, that came about very quickly. Um, once we all realized we're on the same boat and nobody has um, infinite, infinite, you know, infinite resources, um, there's a lot of sharing of information like, okay, you want to do this, then uh, you can download this or you, uh, you know, this, uh, you don't need, you don't need to spend thousands and thousands of euros on equipment not necessarily um uh, you know there are so many um other solutions affordable solutions that you don't know of and that this this whole i find people um artists many artists uh, almost each other very sharing information um, um I also think I, uh, you know, in 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 the in your podcast about uh, with Sue about uh, pa- uh, the paper tapestries, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, that was mentioned that you know your 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 colleagues, your artists are not competition. Uh, I think it that was uh, in that in that podcast, and that really resonated with me um, because of course you have uh, always people not wanting to share, or they keep all the you know for yourself and. Um, yeah, I feel like I've, that that strategy is so outdated. Yeah, yeah. And it won't <laughs> get you work. anywhere because yeah, exactly. people are not going to think of you. If you keep everything to yourself, nobody is going to think of you to ask for something or to give you something or to give you any opportunity. And it's, it's yeah, it's, it's amazing um, if you are thinking in, in from a, a a mindset of giving and sharing it will always come back to you in in a good way you know um it's uh, uh i believe in that you know i and i've had so many um people giving me you know it's basically access to resources it's access to knowledge and, and um without being afraid that somebody is going to use it for what? I mean, you 
um, if somebody asks me about, you know, uh, oh, uh, with, um, oh, I discovered this. Oh, no, good example is is uh, Wendy, Wendy Bale is one of our artists as well, uh, paper cutting artists. And she, um, and she actually was the person that got me into, I, I did collage, collage work before, um, but she kind of in, inspired me with the whole paper cutting thing. And before you know it, I was like, you know, paper cutting away. And then she came up with this um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, material called liquid charcoal. And she does amazing things with it. And I just had this conversation with her, like, you know, she said, you should try it. And it's like this, and it's got this type of, you know, how it works. And I'm like, well, okay, thank you. You know, you've given me something very valuable. And in return, if somebody asks me about, um, I discovered a, a type of ink with graphite in it, and it, it behaves in a certain way, and it behaves differently from other, you know, and you just, you exchange information, um, which is, by the way, already out there on the internet, but this, this goes much quicker. You know, if somebody asks me, oh, where did you get it? I say, oh, well, I got it there. And it's this brand and, and this brand sucks, but, you know, try this brand. And, and, and in the end, because uh, we all do different things with it. You know, I do different things with um, the same material than somebody else does. And I'll, but I know, I still know a lot of people that even would not, you know, um, share that type of information because they're scared on, on what somebody else might do with it. I'm like, I don't know, unless you're having a very, you know, secretive, patented, alchemic, scientific secret. Uh, most of the information is out there on the internet anyway, you know? Yeah, I feel like uh, uh, art world is not like business world. Even if you're sharing uh, some techniques that you are using, I can't imagine another artist who would just want to like produce exactly the same work as you because it well, it's not interesting it's boring you you will have to i mean even if you even if you start copying you know at, at the beginning at the learning stages it, it, it's not it's not the real world it's a study right so you're kind of getting used to the new medium new material and then you come up with something something unique oh, because, yeah, yeah. So, it's like you know it's it's it, it, that's that's a lesson i learned quite quickly in life and this is quite a lovely anecdote I, I think I was very young 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 early like in in oh my god um how do you say that in English um primary school primary school well I was I think 11 or 12 years old or something and I was in a I, drawing I, class I think in uh, states it's already middle school I'm I'm, in, I'm from Russia I don't know <laughs> Sorry? I think it's a middle school in, in the States. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. And our educational systems changed like three yeah, other times. Yeah, so I, yeah. anyway, anyway, I was 12 years old. And I was in drawing school, a drawing class. And I remember I was um, in a station. I was copying, or not copying, I was drawing like Disney-inspired characters. And, uh, you know, the, 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 I had seen Fantasia. And that is one of the best best you know the best disney ever made so i was uh, drawing this mickey mouse with kind of mm -hmm. things and, um you know others other other uh, children liked it and they were like oh can you draw me that one too no i'm not drawing it and then the my teach, teacher came along and he said oh cool. what that, that's nice that's really nice but you know try try something else with that mouse you know try something else do do a bit of your own you know, create your own lines. And I was like, you know, what is wrong? You know, everybody likes this, you know. And he said, you know, try that, try that. And he said, it's a, a, and he said something in the lines of, um, of you know, in, you're young and stubborn. <laughs> so he told me to think, okay. Um, but he said something along the lines of um, a, a, a good copy is, 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 that's, that's a gift, you know, that's a talent, but, um, you know, uh, drawing your own mouse is a joy, uh, something along that. And, and um, um, he must have been long gone now, um, but I'm, I'm still so thankful for what he said. I, I still remember it. You know, I still, I can recall the moment vividly. Uh, also, my uh, initial uh, annoyance at the time, but you know, it's, it's something stru stuck in my head, and now I just started 
drawing, um, like, okay, not copying, you know, and again, copying can be training. It, it, it's good to see, you know, it, it's, uh, it taught me a lot on how uh, characters are, are built up, you know, if you dissect Mickey Mouse and how, you know, you can learn a lot from the old Disney animations. So, okay, but I'm very thankful that I also got to explore my own mouse, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and that's it. Um, Cause uh, you, as an artist, you, you always are looking for something, your, your own handwriting, your own um, unique DNA, what you want to convey in your, in your art, that, that, that's unique, you know? So it's, it's virtually impossible. It's always possible to copy something. And, and, um, but um, creating something of your own is, is just bliss. It's just pure joy. Yeah, what, what a beautiful mantra. Yeah. Copying yeah. is a good talent, but creating something of your own is a joy. Yeah. So, yeah, well, with, with that, we are at the very top of the hour. Uh, I think we time can. flies, eh? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a it's a great note to to finish this conversation, at least you know for the recording purposes. Um, and it, it's interesting how we started with the gruesome fairy tales and ended up at you know happily ever after. Yeah. Create your own joy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm so grateful for you to taking time and talking to me today. Uh, thank you so much, Christy. Uh, everyone uh, who's in, in, by now, you should be absolutely, guys, you, you have to be absolutely intrigued. So just right now, <laughs> go on Instagram, find at Ms. Witty, uh on Instagram, and I will put all the links to uh, all the resources to your website. And by the way, do you have, do you have a store on your website? Um, I, I, I am still very much in the middle of, um, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my, my new website. So it's, it's www.artbychristydewitt.nl. But at the moment there is nothing to be seen except all the links to my socials. So, okay. Well, I'll put all your socials. It's just, uh, the, the reason I'm asking is because you're releasing kind of small collections on Instagram and I'm always too late. <laughs> I'm always too late. I was like, ah, I missed it again. <laughs> I wanted that one and it's gone. <laughs> I, I'll try to pay a little closer attention and I absolutely will acquire one of your amazing uh, pieces. It's just there. I don't know. They speak to me so much and I'll, I'll probably put it in uh, we will, right we by will. my bed. <laughs> <laughs> we will make sure that's going to happen i will give you actually i will give you a private viewing in the uh <laughs> a private tour of the studio with the uh with the with the webcam the other uh, we that, to, that would be we awesome I'll, I'll, that. uh well i can just stop recording and we can do that yeah okay okay let's, let's just let's just say goodbye to everybody yeah. so uh look for the uh blog post where all the links are going to be um listed find christy on instagram uh give her some love absolutely her her creatures are absolutely amazing you will not be uh now i'm forgetting my english anyway <laughs> you will be amazed you will love that it's, it's uh, still morning on your side huh? <laughs> yeah I, I only had one cup of coffee <laughs> not enough <laughs> all right Thank you so much for being with me today and I will see you next time in the art scene. It has been another episode of In the Art Scene podcast. If you liked today's conversation, please give us a good review on Apple and go listen to other great stories. Check out our website intheartscene.com or follow us on Instagram at intheartscene for more content. If you are a creative and you want to share your story, shoot us a message from the website or DM us on Instagram. Look forward to seeing you next time in the art scene!